What's up, savages? So today I'm going to show you how to fake a UFO video. You know those cool UFO videos from the 90s? The VHS safe, shaky camera, low resolution, few bad quality videos. We can make something like that. All right, so I got the cube here selected. X key delete. We don't want the cube there. I'm going to go here to the uh, editor type. Right now, so you viewport, click there. Switch over to movie clip editor, movie clip editor. And we're going to look for a film out here on from pexels.com. You can actually use a video that you recorded with your phone or uh, with your camera. But I like to use pexels.com. They have free videos, free images, royalty free, no attribution necessary. I'm going to have a UFO flying over a city. So I'm going to switch over to videos here. Right now, it's giving me pictures. Let me filter out to videos. All right. So I want a video that shows a lot of movement. So it has things to track. This one just has movement there, but it's very subtle. Something with the horizon, so this one wouldn't work. You can see this one here. Something where that shows the camera moving. So this one might work, the camera's kind of moving. Not necessarily the objects and the camera. This one's not good, the camera's not moving. Just there, looks like um, one of those traffic cams. This one, not too bad, just moving really fast. UFO, I don't know about UFOs can be uh, lying there through those buildings. This one looks cool, but the camera's just standing still. What a camera that stays in the same place. This one's no good. I wanted to use it, but there's a time lapse here from day to night or night to day. And I need uh, areas of contrast. So I need points that stay the same color throughout the video. So a good one that I like is this one right here. See the, the camera just kind of rotating around. Things from a drone. And there's these areas of high contrast that stay there throughout the video. So for instance, they get that, uh, that mark there on that building. It's there throughout the whole video. So that's something that the, the software can track, the Blender can track. So I'm going to use this one right here. See there's that thing. It's following it around. And there's a horizon. So I can have a UFO flying there in the background. Free download. So free download. There we go. You can uh, say thanks to Kelly. You can donate to Kelly by uh, via PayPal. Or you can follow her on Instagram too. Send her a message. Slide in the DM. Say, Kelly. Thanks for your video. Love that, uh, that footage of Chattanooga. All right. So wait for that to download. I already got one downloaded here in Blender. Uh, sorry, on my desktop. Because it's downloading to the uh, downloads folder. I cannot access files from the downloads folder in Blender. So I have to move it somewhere else. I have another one that I saved in the uh, on the desktop. So I'm going to go here to open. Uh, I saved it inside our project folder here, UFO project. And it's this one right here, Pixels Video. Double click it in. And there it is. So this one looks square versus uh, this one here looked a little more rectangular, right? Because I'm zoomed in. Just spin the wheel and zoom out. There you go. See? Just like in the 3D viewport, uh, a lot of the shortcuts you use in the 3D viewport will also work here. All right. So once you bring it in, you get information about it. I hit the play button. You can see it play out. A little glitchy at first. Pause. Back over. So you want the resolution here to match the resolution of your camera or of your render. So I'm going to go here to the properties panel. Click on output. There we go. And then resolution here, X and Y. X is the first number here and then Y. These do not match what I have here. So I got to change them. So for my camera, my render camera, I want those to match. So 3840. So I'm going to change this here to 3840. And then up next, I have a 2024. 2024, all right. And then this is the uh, color data, RGBA, red, green, blue, A, or alpha for transparency. That's there already. And 24, that's frames per second. That's the speed, the frame rate. And it's already there. So if any of these do not match, go ahead and make appropriate changes there. My, mine are fine already. All right, so I'm going to click on prefetch. Load some of that in for me there. Is it loading? Not sure. This is uh, 500 frames. Yeah, it's loading, not responding. 500 frames, that's a little bit long of an animation for you, for me. Here for me to render later. And a four second animation. So I'm going to change the end here to 100. 100. Enter. There we go. So that's not matching there. If I clicked on set scene frames, then it would have given me 500 frames there. It would have gone from 250 to 500. I don't want that many. 
Cool. So there's a lot of movement, a lot of camera movement. Not movement of the scene, but of the camera itself. This is good for tracking. All right, pause. Back to frame one. And I'm going to click on Detect Features. I can try to add my own, but I just find it easier to detect features. It might detect some I don't want, but it's not perfect. But Blender does its best. See, there we go. So the feature is going to detect. It's going to follow those around. Pause. Frame one. It's not following them yet. But based on the image here, those are points of high contrast. And then it shows that one. Maybe it's too big. But usually it's going to choose areas where um, something's light, but there is a darkness around it. Or something's dark, but light areas around it. Something of high contrast. All right. So motion model. I'm going to go with location rotation. So it looks like it kind of rotates, rotates around, and uh, changes location. So it's not scaling. It's not zooming in or out. Perspective is not changing, so I'm going to go with uh, location and rotation. I'm going to leave that as normalize. Sorry, as keyframe. And to prove my render, I'm going to activate uh, normalize here to prove my tracking. Uh, tracking settings extra. Open that one up. Uh, correlation. So that's the uh, how good it's, it does the tracking. I'm going to bring it up to 0.9. If you go up to 1, you're looking for perfection. That's going to make it harder for you. Uh, 0.9, it's good. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to go to the solve tab right here. Solve. There we go. So tripod. It doesn't look like it's on a tripod. If it looked like it was on a tripod, go with tripod. That's for those other um, videos where the camera didn't move. Uh, we're not. We're not editing those. We're not. We're not. Uh, we're not going to make a big video with that. So activate keyframe. There we go. And I'm going to click on solve camera motion, and it's going to track these for me here. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not a, that doesn't track them. It's a control T. Hit it, it's like all. And then control T to track them all. All right, go let it track. You now there's a tracking. So I missed a step. Control T first to track. That's all over the place. That's, uh, that's not a good one there. All the way to 100. Cool. So I hit the play button. And you can see the tracking there. So everything should follow this continuous flow here, how the camera moves. The ones that don't, you're going to delete those. So obviously that one's not moving how you want it to. So I'm going to select it there and pause it. And just click it again. X key delete. Delete track. There we go. So play by it again. I look for any of these little trackers that are obviously not following the flow. Any going up and down. Oh, there's one. Looks like it went up and down right there. Yeah, there we go. Pause it. Click that one. X key delete. You might be using the same file that I'm using, and you might get different trackers. There's a chance that some of them might move a little different than mine. So all these seem to be going the same direction. So it's going with this flow here of the camera movement. Oh, oh, there's one right there. Donkey Kong. Get down there. Get down here. It's that one. Yeah, that one. It's going kind of up and down a bit there. All right. So get rid of those obvious ones that are not following the, the flow. All right, back to frame one. Now, hit A to select all. And now I solve camera motion. And let it solve. And then it'll give you a number and let you know which ones are good, which ones are bad for tracking. So let it load. It's going to give us a number up here. Uh, it should be below one. If it's below one, we're good. Anything above one is bad. Well, not too bad. So slightly above one is not too bad. So 1.39. You got a number like five or three, you don't want to, want to bring that down to something closer to one. So below one is the goal, but close to one is okay. So usually I leave it as is. I settle for that, but to teach you guys the, uh, how to get rid of them, we're going to go up here to clip display, and then click on info. There we go. And you get these numbers here, the coefficients. And you want to delete some that are way out there. So I'm going to look around, see what it looks like an average number. All right, so three is kind of high, but this five out here, this one's even more higher. So I'm going to left-click it. There you go. So now that one's individually selected. X key delete. And if you notice, after I clicked it, I lost the information on the other ones. They're not selected. So hit A to select. There we go. Now I'm going to pan. I'm going to hold on the shift key and the middle mouse button to shift over here. Whoa, that one's super high, 26. I'm going to click that one. X key delete. Oops, undo. I had a feeling that was going to happen. There we go. So now I got that one. There we go. Now I got it. Now I got it. X key delete. There we go. A to select all. And I can try solving it there. Maybe just deleting those who was enough. So 
Because the more trackers you have, the better. You want as many trackers as possible. And so now I'm going to solve camera motion, and it should bring, it should bring that number down. That's how you would get rid of them. You don't want to go around getting rid of everything, because then there's nothing to track. So the more trackers, the better the quality of the, um, of the tracking. Just wait for that. All right. So after the solve error, now it's down below 1, 0.96. So that's good. Oh, we're going to go with that. All right. So I want to get my 3D viewport window back and keep this here as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the timeline a little shorter here. Hold on the middle mouse button here. Sorry, hold on the left mouse button. Drag it down. Now I'm going to hover over this uh, edge right here between the, the movie clip editor. Sorry, yeah, movie clip editor and the outliner over to the left side until my mouse cursor comes this plus sign. Hold down the left mouse button and drag down. There we go. Boom. Just made a new window there. So I can just, I can make these all day. Oh, not there. Down here. There we go. I don't want that one there though. So I'm going to go back in between the dividing point, right click, join areas, and then point the arrow in the direction of the one you want to get rid of. There you go. That's how you do that. Dividing line, let me drag this back over here. Come back, properties panel. All right. So this one is going to be the 3D viewport. So I'm going to go back over here, editor type, switch back to 3D viewport, bam. All right. So I want to see what my camera sees. Zero for camera view. All right. Let me bring this one back up some more. And now I'm going to, I want this video in here. I want that footage of uh, this in my camera here. So I'm going to scroll down through here. All right. So we set, uh, set this background. We can see it here in the camera. But it's not going to render out. We still need another step in there. And that's this one right here. Set up tracking scene. And boom. After we did that, it added this in there. Added it as a background. So even though it said it's background, you would think you put it there as a background, but it's just for the camera for you to play with. But it won't render out until you set up tracking scene. And then it adds here another collection for that. Uh, but this ground here, that's for us to try to map the floor. But in this video here, the floor is a little challenging to define. I know where it's at. You know, we can, you can look at it, but there isn't a lot of uh, floor visible to us. All these buildings are sticking out. I can see this floor here. Give me some floor back there. So it's going to be really challenging trying to map the floor. Uh, you would use these tools here. So an origin for a wall, and you would just use axes here. So here's the origin. Uh, this is the floor there. You try to map it to there. So this is a lot easier to do in something else where you get a lot of floor, like a garage, a street view. Like if you have the camera down there. Um, but we're not animating down there anyways. We're just going to have a UFO fly across. So it's not really going to affect uh, this project here. I'm going to delete the plane there. There we go. All right. So now I want my UFO flying through here. I can try to make one. Or I can just download one. There's some UFOs out there. So uh, I don't need this window anymore. So I'm going to right click in between here. We could have done that without bringing that in. But this way you can see what's going on. Right click. Join areas, point down, boom. All right, here we go. I want a UFO here. So I'm going to go over to this website, blendswap.org. This one's by uh, Blender Artist. You can put stuff on there. You can download some stuff for free. You can donate as well. Uh, I think you're limited to how much stuff you can download at a time. Uh, you have to create an account to log in. I'm going to look for UFO here. Search, UFO. Uh, some of this stuff is not uh, royalty free or you re or they require you to give an attribution of the creator. So CC by, CC by you can see you have to give the uh, creator a shout out. So I'm going to have a CC zero, no shout out. This one right here, generation 1980s UFO right here. Uh, this is the one I want. There you go. And log in so you can download it. The cool thing about uh, BlendSwap is they're all Blender files, so they're all going to be compatible for sure. So download it, open it up as a Blender file. So I got one here already. Make sure to log in. Desktop. UFO project. And it's right here. And it's with the blend. Dot blend. Also, uh, sometimes you might, might get a file like this that's been there for a while, or somebody made it an older version of Blender. So this one's been here since March of 2012. It's around the time I started learning Blender. 
All right, so it's been there 2.6x, old version. Now we're at 2.82, 2.83. So here it is. There's our UFO. Uh, some of the stuff's kind of moved around, right? And that's just because that's the old version of Blender there. So where we're, what we're going to do is just copy and paste this model into our project over here with our town, with our city there. So I'm just going to drag select it. There we go. Make sure not to get that light source over there. I just drag selected that one. It's made out of different parts. I can see right here. One, two, three, four, five, and plus an empty here to hold everything together. So control C to copy. There we go, I just copied it over. Back over here in my project, control V to paste. And there it is, just brought it over. I held on the middle mouse button and moved the mouse. And I ended up getting out of that camera view because I can't see my, um, I can only see my town here in the camera view. All right, <clears throat> so what I can do with this, I can color it, I can try to reshape it. Uh, what you wanna do is if you're gonna move it around, select the empty here, because everything is parented to the empty there. The empty is a uh, plain axis empty. I activated the wireframe so you could see it. So if you're gonna move the UFO, select that line sticking out of it. A G for grab, you can move it. S for scale, R for rotate. All right, I'm gonna try to make this color here a little more reflective, a little shinier. I'm going to go over here to the uh, materials, uh, that surface they're selecting, and that looks to be, is that that color? Nope, maybe it's this color here. Pull, let me hit the tab key for edit mode, and I'll find out for sure. So face selection, I'm going to click on this face here. Yeah, that's that one right there. So I'm going to click on use notes, and this is something I'm more familiar with, the uh, principal BSDF shader. I'm going to check on metallic all the way up, reduce roughness down to zero activate rendered viewport here and now it should be shinier cool I mean, not as shiny as i wanted it but shinier than before all right tab key back to object mode there's this blue color here i'm gonna click on blue light and i'm gonna use the same color so i'm gonna click inside here inside that blue bar for base color i'm gonna click on hex i'm gonna copy this hex code so i'm gonna click in there Control C copy, click out of there, activate use nodes, click on principal BSDF shader and change it over to emission so it can glow. There we go. And I'm gonna click inside this color bar see here. As you can see, we lost that blue color, but I already copied it. So if I click in here, I can paste it right here in X, click in here, control B paste. There we go. And I'm gonna jack up the strength here to 20. Cool. There's that purple light there as well. Purple. Yeah, click in here first before you use notes because then you're going to lose it. X. Copy that over. Use nodes. Oh, cool. It lose, you didn't lose it. So it, you're gonna, I'm going to lose it now that I go over here. Mission. There we go. Now I lost it. So I'm going to paste it here. Control V paste. Cool. 20. Enter. 20. Enter. And this yellow light. I think it's a light. Oh, it's that light right there. Let's do something with that one too. Control C copy. Use nodes. Change principal BSCF to emission. Click in here. Hex. There we go. Change the strength up to 20. And render time. Blue. Watch it glow. Bam. There we go. It's UFO time. Ambient occlusion. Motion blur. Zero for camera view. All right. So if you play the animation, you can see there's a sound lapse. The cars move really fast. So that means my UFO is going to have to move really fast as well. I'm going to select the empty here. Pause. Go to frame one. G for grab. Put it over here somewhere. S for scale. G for grab over there. Uh, so you can kind of see here on the X and Y axis. Or Y is out there, X is down there. Uh, typically, what this should be, this is the, the floor, this is the origin, right? This is the ground. This should be down there with this ground. But so seeing how this floor is not flat, we got all these buildings sticking out of, it's not going to be easy to try to map that. If you had an image that was like a, a video of that footage that was down here on the ground, it'd be easier to map the floor, but it's tricky to do it this way. So, for top view, it's going to move further along the Y right there. Check for grab. All right, for camera view. G, pull it down in there somewhere. All right, maybe I'll have it start out out of the picture. 
up over there, I have it come down. All right, so I got over there, I got the empty selected there. I'm at frame one, I key, dot run scale. All right, so now I got a keyframe at frame one, it's gonna start out over there. All right, so then at 50, I'm gonna zoom in and then go back. All right, I'm at frame 50. And then G for grass, so I can pull it in from here. You want to keep it in the sky. We have it go across here and then back. All right. I key all rod scale. Frame 100. And then G for grab and push it back over there. Maybe I rotate it a bit. Let's see here. Or Y, so it goes up. Or X. Or Y. There we go. And way out there. I key, I run scale. All right, so we play this animation. So shoot a zoom in and out of there. And notice I'll put it off kind of far away. So it looks like a fake UFO video. For some reason, you know, they're always far away. They're never up close. And it's there again for a little bit. And it gets out of the frame. And there you go, it's fake UFO video. All right, so now to render this out, I'm gonna pause it, it's gonna slow down my computer here. So one important thing you gotta do when you render this out, right here, render tab, open film, and activate transparent right here. There you go, you wanna get the checkered, uh, checkered pattern there. That way when you render this out, the UFO and that video background there will both be in the final render. I'm gonna go over here to output, and I'm gonna go over with JPEG. Should render faster. Uh, resolution quality here. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to try 30%. The quality can be worse, but it's old school VHS tapes. The quality was never that good anyways. This will also help it render a lot faster. Uh, I'm going to go over here to the folder, give it a name, and choose a location for it to render out to. So UFO project. I made a project folder earlier. Uh, earlier I tried to render this out, but then my computer uh, shut down, so I lost it. Let's see, UFO test final. This will be the final one, no more problems. All right, except, I almost forgot one thing, uh, the light. Let's go with light. Make sure you got the light with uh, respect to the lighting there. So I think this is a sunset. It looks like the light's coming over here from this area. So there's a light there. Just throw it, for, throw it further over there. Go to a frame where the UFO is closer to that area there. And I'll zoom into UFO and see if there's any light bouncing off of it. I got light selected here. Properties panel. And I just make it a little shinier there. I'm going to go up to 5,000. There you go. That light, your light here, it's not going to affect the uh, your video here. It's for the models that you throw in your 3D models. All right. So everything over here is ready to go in the output. So before you completely commit to the render, you can verify to make sure that the background here the city and your UFO are coming out. Select the frame where they're both visible. We got the UFO and the city there. And then hit F12 on your, on your uh, keyboard just to render out one image there, that one frame there, instead of the whole thing. Wait for it to load. If you got both in there, then you're good to go. You're ready to play ball. So that frame rendered. I got the city, got the UFO, so it's ready to go. So control F12 next. All right, so back over here, Blender, Control F12. Wait for your animation to render. Wait patiently. And you full zoom in there. And you know, nice fake video. Like, Whoa, what was that? A UFO? Oh, no, I just captured a UFO. I better send this to the news. But there you go, everybody. That's how easy it is. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.